Sergeant Pillay, you can go. Good morning. Welcome to the Committee on Small Businesses. Will council members and staff please turn on their videos at this time? To minimize disruptions, place all cell phones and electronic devices on vibrate. We are ready to begin. Chair Joe, now you can begin. Thank you, Carl. Good morning. I'm Council Member Mark Joan. I chair the Committee on Small Business. I'd like to welcome you to our remote vote today on intros 1958 and 1470, as well as two pre-considered intros. The COVID-19 crisis presents perhaps the greatest threat to the restaurant industry in modern history. A recent report by the Partnership for New York City estimates a close to 700,000 accommodation and food service jobs are vulnerable to loss, over half of which come from small businesses that employ fewer than 100 employees. Over 1,200 restaurants have closed since March 10th, and restaurants will continue to close over the coming months, especially if indoor dining is not permitted as the warmer summer months come to an end. While restaurants are struggling to keep their doors open and continue paying their staff, third-party delivery platforms have experienced a surge in use. Their business model continues to thrive under COVID, while restaurants continue to need our and basically just try to survive. I am proud of this committee's work in the passing of Local Laws 51 and 52, which went into effect this past June. These bills are set to expire in September. However, and thereafter must be extended, the two pre-considered intros will extend the cap on third-party delivery fees charged to all vulnerable restaurants and prohibit platforms from charging restaurants for telephone orders that did not result in an actual purchase or sale. These regulations will continue until restaurants can reopen to indoor dining at 100% capacity and 90 days thereafter. I am proud of my bills and the work of this committee, and I look forward to passing these pre-considered intros today. In response to this committee's effort to save the restaurant industry, Grubhub has taken up digital ads in the districts of council members who support these legislative efforts, including myself, council member Moya, and Speaker Johnson. While Grubhub has experienced a surge in revenue and active diners since the pandemic began, restaurants across this city are shutting their doors for good. I believe that the people reveal their true color, colors in times of crisis. To me, and it should anger all council members, restaurant owners, small business owners, and New Yorkers that Grubhub would use their resources to fund digital ads to try and kill this legislation rather than use those same resources to further support our restaurants. Every dollar spent in digital ads to try and kill this legislation and go after individual council members rather than use those same resources to further support our restaurants. Every dollar spent on the digital ads is a dollar that could have gone to a restaurant owner, hostess, waiter, or waitress. That would in turn boost this city's economy. The council will not be bullied by well-funded companies seeking to take advantage of a city in crisis. This committee will legislate and protect the small businesses that make this city great. The committee will be voting on two other intros, two other pieces of legislation today, as well as intro 1958 and intro 1470. Intro 1958 would further investigate which businesses were able to access money from the Department of Small Business Services loan and grant program. 
The importance of this issue came to light at our small business hearing in April, where the administration revealed to me that only 1% of their loans went to the Bronx. Intro 1470 will codify the Commercial Lease Assistance Program, which has been vital during the pandemic in providing our mom and pop shops with free legal services to help mm -hmm. businesses sign a new lease or address a commercial lease related issue. With that said, I'd like to thank my chief of staff, Reggie Johnson, our legislative counsel, Stephanie Jones, and our policy analyst, Noah Meisler, and financial analyst, Aliyah Ali, for all their hard work in preparing for this hearing. I'd like to turn it over to Council Member Moyer, who would like to give a statement about reconsidered intro. Council Member Moyer. Thank you, Chair Jonai. Thank you, Chair Jonai, uh, for your support of small businesses uh, and uh, our local restaurants and for co-sponsoring our legislation to cap the fees third-party food delivery apps can charge restaurants during the pandemic. The City Council voted overwhelmingly to pass that bill in May, and we're here today to vote out another bill uh, that we've co-sponsored together to clarify the time frame those fee caps uh, will be in place for. In short, this bill will keep those small business protections in for as long as restaurants are hamstrung by the pandemic. The fee caps will remain in place until restaurants can resume indoor dining at a maximum capacity. As someone who lives and represents the epicenter of the COVID-19 outbreak uh, in the United States, I've witnessed the phases of this pandemic firsthand, and I've seen the crippling effects it's had on our local mom and pop restaurants. I've watched them have to shutter their shops and rely entirely on apps like Grubhub. Some of these apps were only too eager to profit off of the pandemic. And then I watched them begin outdoor dining at a dramatically reduced capacity as the city slowly reopened for business. Every restaurant I spoke to or heard about has said how critical our original, cap, uh, our original fee cap laws was to their business. If not for enacting that law, countless uh, businesses would have failed and many more New Yorkers might be out of work now. Now these small businesses are asking, what happens when these uh, cap fees expire? They're asking because they know that no matter what the infection rate is now, they'll be grappling with the consequences of this disease for some time. They know that we're still very much in the middle of the pandemic. Um, and one of the things that, that, that they know is to make sure that uh, we can and must do is to uh, ensure that these exorbitant fees from these third party food apps uh, do not hinder them uh, and keep them struggling uh, and their shops uh, to be on life support. Uh, and that's what this bill does. Uh, this will offer our local restaurants temporary protection from the billion dollar tech companies leeching off of them for as long as the COVID forces, uh, for as long as COVID forces patrons onto these apps and away from their tables. It's simple, logical, and necessary. And I want to speak about the smear campaign that Grubhub has launched targeting Chair Jonai, Speaker Johnson, and myself over this bill. It's an absurd strategy by a $7 billion tech company out of Chicago uh, that's painting New York City's mom and pop restaurants and their efforts to protect them during the worst crisis in our lifetime as the bad guys. If that's how they want to spend their money on digital advertising, villainizing us, be my guest. But New Yorkers see through it and New Yorkers have each other's back. And I want to take this opportunity to thank the New York City Hospitality Alliance, all the restaurants that have testified before this committee, Chair Jonai, Speaker Johnson, and my colleagues for their support uh, on this effort. And I urge them to pass this pre-considered intro. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Moya. Before we continue, I'd like to acknowledge the following council members who have joined us. Council Member Levin, Council Member Rosenthal, Council Member Perkins, Councilmember Rodriguez and Councilmember Richards. I would now like to turn it over to Councilmember Richards uh, to give a statement on intro 1958A. Councilmember? Thank you so much and thank you to Chair Jonai. I'm Councilmember Donovan Richards, representing the 31st District in Queens. Uh, and while some businesses have resumed operations throughout our city, many of them face growing debts due to the restrictions put in place to prevent COVID 19. Uh, intro 1958, my bill will force small business services to disclose how their grants 
and loans were distributed by zip codes. The report will identify businesses based on industry, the types of goods and services offered, and whether the businesses occupy a storefront or as a mobile business. It would also identify the type of award each business received, whether it was a grant or loan and the amount each business received. Based on the information we already have, it's obvious that businesses in Manhattan were prioritized while our outer borough small businesses were neglected. This story continues to repeat itself and only transparency will end this cycle. Queens is the second largest contributor to our city's economy. The majority of the small businesses in our borough were built by immigrants who put everything in to promise into the promise of the American dream and invested in our city. We cannot turn our backs on them now. Uh, this is why this bill is so critical. I look forward to working uh, to ensure that we continue to bring equity through these specific programs and continue to work with uh, the Commissioner of the Department of Small Business Services as we move forward. Uh, I want to thank, once again, Councilmember Joe and I, uh, Speaker Johnson, and all my colleagues for their support. I urge you all to vote aye on this bill. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember. I'd now like to turn it over to William Martin, who will hold a roll call on the bills. Good morning, everyone. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on small business. All items are coupled. Chair Joni. I vote aye. Council member Levin. I vote aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rosenthal. I vote aye. Perkins. Council member Perkins. Council member, you're muted. The white guy, Bill Perkins. Is that in there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where? Right, right there, the big guy there. In the blue. In blue? Uh huh. Yeah. Council member Perkins, how are you? Oh, yeah, he starts to look right there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, when people Google Bill Perkins, there's a few, a few, there's a few, few Bill Perkins. Perkins. So it's, I, it's, we're talking, Alicia. Council member Perkins? You vote on Committee on Small Business. This Bill Perkins, right? Councilman Bill Perkins. Then there's this Bill Perkins that's in the Senate. This is Bill Perkins. Councilmember Perkins, can you hear me? This is William Martin, Legislative Clerk. This is Chief Sergeant at Arms. Uh, we're reaching out to Councilmember Perkins. It appears he's having some technical issues. We'll get back sure. to him.
Okay, they're calling your roll. So I can say aye. <laughs> yeah. Just say aye. Mm -hmm. Aye on all. <laughs> Billy, you're on mute. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Council Member. Final vote, Committee on Small Business. All items have been adopted by the committee, five in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. Thank you. Hey. Chair Jonai, did you want to close out the, the vote? This year, I closes out today's hearing. I want to thank everyone for voting aye on this. I hope Grubhub uh, got a clear message today. Thank you all. Who's the host?